It is a cancer that you may not hear about very often, but it affects hundreds of thousands of people every year. So on our house call today, we're talking about the signs and symptoms of colorectal cancer. I'm joined by Dr. William Outlaw, a gastroenterologist at Cone Health and a member of the Cone Health medical staff. Good morning. Good morning. So let's talk about, I, I guess, the prevalence of, of colorectal cancer. About how many people are affected by it each year? In the United States, about 150,000 people are diagnosed annually, and about 50,000 people unfortunately die from the disease annually. So I, I have always heard that it is a, a fairly slow growing uh, cancer, but it's also difficult to detect. Is that the case? It is difficult to detect because it has no symptoms, mm -hmm. which is why we recommend screening for the disease with colonoscopy. Now, what, what age? I, is 50 the, the, the normal it's age that you would affect? Typically 50, yeah. there's been some debate among other societies, but right now age 50 is when we recommend starting, or if you have symptoms or a family history. Symptoms like what? Symptoms like abdominal pain, blood in your stool, maybe some x-ray that's abnormal, your mm -hmm. bowel habits aren't quite the same, mm -hmm. weight loss. So at whatever age, if you see those symptoms, but what about family history? That's got to play a big role too, and I think a lot of times Families just don't discuss health history. This is, a, this is a great reason that you should be discussing it, right? Yes, I think it's not dinner time conversation typically, sure. but we recommend everyone discuss importance, family history matters, including colon cancer. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people aren't happy about the screening part, but that's the way that you really do get a closer look and you find problems before they become bigger problems. Exactly. Colon cancer is largely preventable if detected at the early stage, which is called a polyp. And even mm -hmm. if caught in the cancerous stage, if caught early, it's largely curable as well. The, the, the important part is what you said right there, that it is largely preventable if, if we go in for those screenings yeah. and if you can find it as early as possible. Is it something where once the signs begin or the symptoms or things like that, is it too late or is that often fairly early in the it's, process? It's often later in the process, but it's mm -hmm. never too late. We diagnose people frequently with symptoms that are caught in an early stage and are cured. The key point is anything that doesn't seem right gets seen, or if you're age 50, gets seen. Is there much of a difference between symptoms for men and women? Uh, the symptoms are fairly identical for men and mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. What about uh, uh, age? We talked about the 50-year-old screening or something like that. Uh, at any age, if you're having problems, you should go in and talk to a doctor about it. Or do they mask themselves as other things maybe as you get older? Uh, as you get older, people sometimes confuse being constipated with just being part of old age mm -hmm. or part of some medications they're taking, but you should never self-diagnose. You should always talk to your doctor about it. I think it. when you talk about self-diagnose, I think people are content with going on Google and Googling symptoms, which yes. is never the way to find out. You should talk to your physician about it. That's correct. Dr. Google's typically not the guide you want. I, I guess so. But the, the screening process is a bit easier than it used to be, the, the, the prep and things like that. Yes, the preps, there are a lot of newer preps that have lower volume. There's a lot more into it as far as diet. It's a little bit not as strict as it used to be. So we have all the reasons and tools available to make it where you can get screened if you want to get screened. Okay, well, we're going to be talking about this throughout the week, and it's something that you should be talking about. We mentioned the family history part. That's a discussion that you can have with your, your parents, grandparents, and things like that and find out more. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you. And if you want to learn more about colorectal cancer and how to prevent it, they've got some great events, and this is kind of a neat way to get an inside look at the strolling colon. It's happening in the Piedmont, a 12-foot inflatable colon that people can walk through and learn more about how to prevent colon cancer. It's happening Saturday, March 9th from 11 to 2 at Holly Hill Mall in Burlington. They'll also have one taking place the following Saturday, March 16th, at the McGirt Horton branch of the Greensboro Public Library on Phillips Avenue. And next Monday, Cone Health is hosting an education series with a topic focusing on early detection and surgical approaches to colorectal cancer. That'll be at the Cone Health Cancer Center at Wesley Long Hospital, 6 to 7 o'clock, and you can register online or just give them a call at the number on your screen. House Call on Fox 8 is sponsored by Cone Health.